My name is Bob Marzano, and I'm for, and from the Center for Competency Based Education. And the topic of this session is um, uh, converting scores on proficiency scales to traditional grades, um, letter grades and number grades. Uh, the um, uh, uh, proficiency scales, the, you know, I've been in use for many, many years. The one that we recommend and use within the Center for Competency-Based Education um, has uh, scores that range from zero through four with half point scores. Uh, what you see here is a generic form of uh, uh, our proficiency scale. Important parts here are that uh, the at the 3.0 level, that's where the target content is. So if you're teaching uh, mathematics at the elementary level and you have a topic um, dealing with fractions uh, and a proficiency scale is designed for that, at the 3.0 level, you will state exactly what you expect students to know and be able to do that to obtain the score with 3.0. Um, at the 2.0, you will have simpler content, uh, which might be some basic facts about fractions, um, some simple conversions that students have to do with, uh, with, with fractions, maybe even some terminology. Uh, and to 4.0, uh, you will state expectations about, about what it would look like, what they have to know and be able to do to demonstrate they've gone beyond the target. So the content, there's only three levels of actually stated content in this proficiency scale. Uh, every scale uh, is designed for a topic. I like to call them measurement topics. And at a given grade level and subject area, there will be a number of proficiency scales the teacher is using and addressing teaching to and using for assessment uh, across the, the school year. Uh, uh, what about all these other scores? Uh, they, well, they all refer to those three levels of content. At the lowest level, uh, zero, uh, even with help, a student can't demonstrate any of the knowledge, you know, that's in a uh, content that's in the scale explicitly stated. At a 1.0, um, the student um, uh, can, with help, uh, show some knowledge of some of the content at the 2.0 level and 3.0 level. And a four, at the 4.0 level, the student is demonstrating what needs to be done uh, uh, to show he or she um, is above, has gone above and beyond the target content. Half, half point scores are just what it sounds like. Um, uh, let's look at the 2.5. Uh, it says there are no major errors or omissions regarding the 2.0 content uh, and, and partial knowledge or partial success at the 3.0 level, uh, and that warrants a 2.5. Uh, so scenario here is that uh, teacher has proficiency scales, uh, students are scored on topics using these proficiency scales. Now it's come to the end of a grading period <clears throat> and you as the teacher have to somehow summarize uh, using traditional letter grades or number grades, because that's what your school does or your district or your state, using these scores on proficiency scales. So each one of you, for argument's sake, let's say in a given grading period, you've covered eight topics, eight uh, measurement topics, each with its own proficiency scale. At the end of the grading period, you will have a summative score for each student on each one of those eight measurement topics. Now, what do you do with that? How do, you, how do you turn it into an overall grade? Now, there is no one way to do this, but what I'm going to show you here uh, in the attached charts, and by the way, you can, you, know, you can get these charts and um, uh, use them at your, dis your, your, your discretion, uh, is the most common practice that we've seen uh, over the years. Um, uh, this one, chart number one, um, notice at the top it says A, equals 3.0. This is really common that a school says, okay, um, the uh, yeah, if student average score across these eight different topics, uh, all scored by proficiency scales is a 3.0 or above, they're, they're, they, get, they get the eight, uh, they're in the eight category. The logic that people follow is, well, wait a minute, that's the target con content. That's de that they demonstrated proficiency. Now there are schools that say no, no, no. For you know, for the A category, we want 
you know, more than just proficiency, and that's legitimate too. But let, let's start with uh, 3.0 uh, 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 is the cut point for A. As you can see here, um, uh, uh, average score of 3.0 uh, all the way up to an average score of 4.0, that's all A. So that's the traditional letter grade approach. Um, but note the percentile, you know, score. Um, that's more fine grain, obviously. So in some states, actually, they require uh, a percentage score. So now uh, you can uh, get to a fine, finer grain reporting for the students. Uh, if, an, if a particular student um, has uh, an average uh, proficiency score of uh, 3.25, that's an A, obviously, but if it's percentage score uh, scores that are being used, uh, no, I said three point, let's make it 3.35. Um, that's a 93, that translates to a 93. Anything below 3.0, you're in the B category or, you know, the percentiles that would range from uh, 89 down to 80, uh, and you get the pattern there. So um, the columns that are in color on this chart, you know, that they're all passing um, the, um, well, it depends on what you call passing. Uh, uh, the first three are C, uh, you know, uh, the, the last one here on the right is a D and then everything else, um, you know, is in the F category, uh, traditionally. Um, so, uh, it's very straightforward to translate, uh, a group of proficiency score, uh, proficiency scale summative scores for an individual student, at the end of a grading period to translate that into uh, an overall grade, letter grade, or an overall percentage grade. Now, I'd mentioned at the outset, uh, there are some schools uh, that say, no, we want the A to start higher than an average score of 3.25. Uh, here's an example, a uh, real life example. Uh, the high school that took this approach, they said, no, 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 um, we want the A category to start at 3.5. And I said, do you realize what that means is that um, uh, your students will, uh, will have to, on at least half of the measurement topics that were addressed during the grade, grading period, uh, they, they received a score of 4.0. Um, uh, and uh, I, on the on the other half, they didn't go below a 3.0. They said, yeah, that's exactly what we want. Fine. Uh, very straightforward. Uh, here you've got one way of doing that. Now, the 3.50 and above. So if I average my eight scores uh, for uh, the eight proficiency scales um, is a 3.5 to a 3.59, um, then that's the A category and everything above that you know, is A. Uh, if you're going to a percentage approach, now it's more fine-grained, you know, going from a 96 up to a 100. Uh, so you get the pattern there. Like I say, there's no one right answer. Uh, this really is value-driven whenever you take a proficiency scale score and translate it into some other metric. It, it, you really, that's a statement you know, a preference on, on, on your part. Uh, and that's fine. Uh, different schools might have kind of different criteria that they want to attach with these overall grades. And an overall grade, by the way, is called an omnibus grade, whether it's a letter grade or it's a percentage score. Um, uh, now, um, there's another type of conversion um, that you might need to do. And this would occur in a classroom where a teacher uh, where a, a teacher is providing opportunities for students to work at um, multiple grade levels for the various topics that are being addressed. Uh, let me add a little detail to that. <clears throat> the, um, uh, uh, like, let's, let's say mathematics and uh, let's make it fourth grade uh, and, uh, uh, oh, let's make it like sixth, sixth grade. Uh, the, um, uh, and for the most part, all the students are working on the sixth grade topics. Um, but there are some students, you know, who have already demonstrated mastery, you know, in some of those measurement topics. And you set the classroom up so they can actually start to work on proficiency scales, topics and proficiency scales at a higher grade level, you know, one grade level above. Uh, now, how do you do that? Um, uh, you know, how do you take their score 
on a measurement topic with this proficiency scale that's a grade level above where they are uh, and make it not hurt, <laughs> if you will, <laughs> their overall score because they're probably going to get lower grades, lower proficiency scale scores on those topics that are above their 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 grade level. So here's the conversion chart, um, and I'll show you how this all comes together in, in the very next slide. Um, uh, if um, uh, each one of these columns or color coded columns or pairs of columns, I should say, um, represent how uh, a situation where a topic that a student is working on is a grade level above, you know, or grade level below, you know, where they are chronologically. Uh, so let's take the left hand side there, the green and the tan. Uh, I hope that's tan. I'm a little colorblind. Sorry. Um, the uh, so if you see the earned score there. Now uh, let, let let let's take the let's let, let's let's take the green pair. Um, uh, that's the conversion for topics that are one grade low. Oh, this is uh, I went the wrong way. Uh, one grade level below. Sorry. Let's go to the right um, uh, and look at the blue. Um, I, pair of columns. Um, this, uh, this is the conversion for topics that are one grade level above where a student is chronologically. So the earned score uh, is what the student received on the proficiency scale. The weighted score is what you use when you're computing the average for a student. So if a student um, uh, is at the uh, uh, sixth grade, uh, but is working on one topic uh, that is one grade level above where he is. Now they're working on one seventh grade topic uh, and the student gets a four on that topic. When you actually compute the average for the student across all the measurement topics for that grading period, instead of, uh, instead of entering a score of four for the student, what you say is a student, the weighted score is a seven. And if the student received a 3.5, the weighted version of that is a 6.5. And you can see the logic there. Uh, and if, you, if the student happened to be working on topics that are two grade levels above uh, where he or she is chronologically, the 4.0 now uh, is actually an 8.0 and a 3.5 is a 7.5. 7 you get the idea. And same thing the other way. If I'm a sixth grader, but I'm working on a fifth grade measurement topic, I get a 4.0 in that measurement topic. When you calculate my average, you translate that 4.0 to a 2.0. Let me show you the impact of doing this. So um, uh, here are, uh, here's an example of one student uh, and, and 10 measurement topics during a grading period. And this student uh, is at the seventh grade chronologically. Now, the score that the student received, is, however, however, out of those 10, three of those were at the eighth grade level. So this student was working on seven topics that were at, at his or her grade level and three topics that were one grade level above. Um, now, the scores, the unweighted score represents the score the student actually received on each one of those. So 3.0 on topic one, 3.5 on topic two, 4.0 topic and so on. Once you get down, you could get down to topic seven, 4.0, but when you hit topic eight, the scores drop dramatically, you know, where everything else was, you know, basically, you know, well, one, 2.5, but, you know, fours and threes, uh, 3.5s, but now all of a sudden it's 1.5 for topic eight. 1.0 for uh, topic nine and a 0.5 uh, for topic 10, uh, which means uh, that uh, uh, the student, uh, 0.5, the student with help only could do some of the simpler, um, demonstrate uh, knowledge of some of the simpler con content on the scale. If you just average those unweighted scores, the student's average would be at 2.6, which is going to be below that A category. And depending on the conversion chart you're using, that might be down in the C level. Um, uh, and clearly that's not fair. This student is working on 30% of what the student was working on is a grade level above where he or she is. 
However, when you add the weight, so they have the weighted scores in the very last column, uh, now that pattern of scores translates to a 3.5. Um, so the, um, uh, uh, the system is pretty straightforward. And what it, it, conversion um, is very legitimate to do. Uh, and what this points out is that even an individual teacher in a school that is not using a standards reference or a competency-based approach, but has to report out in traditional omnibus grades, whether they be letter grades or percentage grades, can do it. And they can actually have a class where students are working on, working on topics at grade levels other than the one he or she uh, is at uh, chronologically. Uh, so uh, straightforward, a little bit technical though, but I mean, the nice part here is uh, we at the Center for Competency-Based Education have been working uh, in the CBE world for so long. There are very few questions that come up now that we don't have some answer to because over the years, you know, we've dealt with these problems and, um, and you know, identified one or more ways of addressing them. Hope, hope this helps you.